The year is 1824. The many clans of Japan have grown tense with the influx of outside influence from cultures abroad, especially after 200 years of complete isolation from the outside world. In 1825, the Shogun, supreme ruler of Japan, issued an edict to repel foreign trade ships and vessels from Japanese waters in order to stop the outside influence from entering Japan. Japan was ruled by the Tokugawa Shogunate, a feudal military government that held dominance over the many small clans and domains, which were ruled by lords known as daimyos. Many people in power in Japan, especially the Shogun, were reactionary against connecting with the outside world. They saw foreign cultures, especially Western cultures, as uncivilized and barbaric. The edict was a part of a 200-year-old tradition of Japanese foreign policy known as Sakoku, which means closed country. More than a decade later, in 1837, an unarmed trade ship from America was spotted offshore at the mouth of Edo Bay. The ship sailed closer and closer, until it was clear that it was intended to be heading towards the coastal town of Uraga. Nearby the town, on the Miura Peninsula, Cannons placed atop a hill overlooked the bay, with their crews ominously watching the foreign vessel approach the shore. The ship was now approaching the port, with its white sails, its black hull, and its name on its bow, the SS Morrison. She was now in range, and the Shogun's policy from 12 years prior was now very, very real. Cannons had opened fire upon the ship, causing it to flee away from the shore, to anchor at a safe distance from the cannons. Curious to meet the foreigners, several civilian fishermen sailed out to meet the Morrison. They boarded the ship peacefully, and the American crew and fishermen shared food and got drunk off of sake together, late into the night. Under the cover of darkness, the cannon crews on the hill had moved the guns closer to the shore, and once again, they were in range of the Morrison. By daybreak, hundreds of small boats, each with cannons on their front, were attempting to surround the Morrison in order to attack it. As the sun rose, the cannons ashore began to fire once again, and so the Morrison sailed away with little damage. The ship sailed all the way down to Kagoshima, in Kyushu, which belonged to the clan known as the Satsuma Domain. There, the ship's captain, Charles W. King, met with some Satsuma government officials, of whom decided to detain and imprison two of his crew members. After being warned by several local fishermen of the danger he was in, King decided to abandon his trade expedition. The following morning, when the Morrison set sail away from Japan, more cannons on the coast fired upon the ship once again. The ship quickly sailed away with a course towards Canton in China. Eventually, King returned to the United States in 1839, where he furiously wrote about the incident in his journey. He claimed that the next contact with Japan, quote, had better be left to the stronger and wiser actions of the American government, end quote. Six years later, in 1845, a resolution had been introduced to the United States Congress to open trade with Japan in response to the Morrison incident. Although the resolution was never passed, Commodore James Bidel of the U.S. Navy was sent with command over two warships, the USS Columbus and the USS Vincennes, to negotiate for open trade with Japan. But the Shogun stayed true to his policies. No outside trade besides with the Dutch, shall be permitted in Japan. The Commodore left in disappointment. Seven years passed until one day, in 1853, 
four monstrous steam-powered warships of the U.S. Navy arrived in Uraga, this time under Commodore Matthew Perry. Perry refused to leave and demanded that he speak with the Shogun, Tokugawa Iemachi. He threatened Iemachi that if he doesn't open Japan to trade with the U.S. in a year's time, it won't be the Americans to feel the wrath of the giant cannons. Perry and his ships set sail again, and a year passed by. In 1854, Perry returned with 10 ships and 1,600 soldiers. They disembarked at Kanagawa to meet with Iemachi. This was the moment. Iemachi had two choices. Open the country to trade with the West and be shamed for conceding to the U.S. demands, or to stay true to the Sakoku and for Edo and everything and everyone along the nearby coastline to be absolutely annihilated by U.S. ships, which would result in the deaths of many inhabitants, including Iemachi himself. The Shogun had no choice and decided to concede. He was forced to sign several unfair agreements and open the country to the outside world for the first time in 200 years. This was the dawn of the Bakumatsu era, the beginning of the end for the Tokugawa shogunate.